Okay, this should be a fun one, uh, deviating from my normally very sales focused videos. Today's video is about, you know, more social media, building an audience, um, what, what a lot of folks would call direct marketing, and it really focuses on why Facebook likes are not something that, that's productive for your small business. And, and, and I get this question a lot about how do I drive traffic or how do I build an audience, and a lot of folks seem to think that that Facebook is a viable tool. And I want to explain that it's a great tool for driving traffic, but ultimately building your business around your, your fan page or your company page or business page or community page, or whatever they call it, is, is actually not a good idea. So to, to, to get into this, I got to talk a little bit about you know, the concept of, of driving traffic. So fundamentally, nothing happens on the internet uh, unless you can drive traffic, right? How do people find you, find your site, what have you? And we'll talk about how you can drive, you know, Facebook traffic, right? So, so certainly uh, traffic can go to your Facebook page through organic, right? Organic search, uh, people searching for keywords and terms. Uh, you can use things like promoted posts, right? Uh, I, think, I think they also call these things like boosted posts. Right, so you can do uh, stuff like that. Um, you can actually use uh, traditional pay-per-click campaigns, you know, placing ads, Google, Google pay-per-click. Um, you see a lot of times uh, companies uh, or, 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 or vendors, right, will use events, you know, go to our Facebook page, like us on Facebook, you know, get this coupon if you like us on Facebook. So they're driving all this traffic to Facebook, which, which sounds good, right? A lot of times these days you'll see signage, we are on Facebook. Um, a lot of times people will also put their content on their Facebook page, uh, you know, specials, what have you, that will drive traffic there, check out our Facebook page for, uh, for things like that. Um, fundamentally, it, it all makes sense, and, and the way to think about this is, all this traffic is your funnel, right? It's, it's what's driving folks to you, and, and in the case of, uh, you know, Facebook, right, at the end of the day, you're driving folks to your Facebook page. And again, a lot of different terms over the years, fan page, company page, business page. But the, the concept seems to be, you know, get us to like your page because then we'll be able to communicate with you and, you know, keep up with you and all, all that kind of stuff. So at some point we get these, these likes. And the thought is that, or, or I should say the, the belief is that we can create new content Right, uh, could be a special, could be something we're doing. You know, uh, I'll do a little, 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 little price tag thing here. Uh, let's see, like that. Right, come into my store, etc. And and then we can push it to our audience. Right, so when we when we when we click the post button, uh, we have this belief that it's going to go to our audience. And here's the problem. Um, let's say you have about a hundred of these precious little likes that, you know, whether it's 100,000 doesn't really matter. What people don't realize is what actually shows up in the user stream, right? So this is, this is my Facebook page here, right? With all my, all my posts and the stuff on the side. What actually gets here is a much lower percent uh, of your likes than you actually have. So it really varies and, and, and Facebook uses a lot of complex algorithms to, uh, to do this. But, you know, let's just say that in a lot of cases, it's less than 20%, right? If you push a post out to your followers, to your likers, uh, less than 20% you can, you can safely assume are gonna actually see that content. And that's kind of frustrating, right? Because you've done all this work to get it there. Well, what happens to the rest, right? What happens, well, the reality is Facebook, their game is pretty simple. They want you to spend money with them, right? And, and you know, who can blame them, right? It's their platform, they've built it. Uh, so the other 80% of likes, they come back to you and they say, you know what? You can reach those folks uh, if you use what we call a boosted post, right? So you can boost it, you can boost your post and get access to the rest of your, your, your likes. And while that's all well and good and all sorts of fun, etc., uh, you know, ultimately you're building an audience that you don't have access to. Facebook also says uh, that you can, you know, you can you can do things like uh, sponsored posts, right? You guys have all seen these things, so that can be used to drive new traffic. You also can use sponsored posts uh, in your in your own existing stream, etc. So fundamentally, 
this is not a bad platform, and I don't want to slam Facebook and say it's a bad platform. What I want to say is, long term, this is a very inefficient way to to build an audience, right? Because fundamentally, you you are constrained in your ability to reach that audience and talk to them and get them into your store or get them to go to your website or what have you. So the question is, what do we do about it, right? How do we fix this problem? And part of the answer is in is in Facebook. Uh, sorry, is 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 in how you handle Facebook, but part of it is actually in the bigger picture of how you should be setting up your infrastructure. And I'll, I'll tell you that, that fundamentally, where should I put this thing? I'll put it down here because it looks good. Um, fundamentally, what you need to be thinking about is how you are gonna build what online marketers call an opt-in database, right? Or an opt-in list, right? And, you know, obviously we'd like to have everybody's contact information on their cell phone and, and all sorts of good stuff like that, but it doesn't always work that way. The first step to marketing and having access to your community is to get somebody's email, right? You have to have somebody's email or other ways to communicate them if you want to do it actively, right? Facebook is a great passive mechanism if somebody happens to be scrolling through, if your post makes it in the top 20% or you've paid for it, and then if they decide to click on it, well, they're gonna engage with you. That's really great and wonderful in the social media world, but at the end of the day, I wanna communicate with folks, and, and I wanna have their email address, right? Ultimately, for me, I wanna have their phone, I wanna have their name, right? In a lot of cases, you have a little bit of information. Uh, you know, for some things, I actually wanna have their address. Not that I'm gonna stalk folks, but you know, certain offers and things might actually do something with that. Um, how does this happen? How do you make this work? Well, there's, there's really two pieces that you need. You need some technology here. And you know, probably the easiest thing to do, and you guys have probably heard me talk about this before, uh, MailChimp, which is 100% free, right? So you can go out and, and, and get online and for up to about, I think it's about 2,000 contacts. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but uh, you don't pay a dime. So you need to have this up and running so you have a place to store people's email addresses and their information, when and if you get it, however you get it. Um, and then you will also have the ability to go outbound with them and send them emails and, and other kind of communications. The trick is, how do you get them in there, right? You can't really go around asking everybody for their email. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to think about this, but fundamentally, there, there exists a class of technology called landing page, also, known as a squeeze page, right? And you've all seen these, you just may not have known it. You know, a squeeze page or a landing page is some sort of, uh, it looks like a website page, right? And uh, it, is a, it is intended to capture your email address or other information um, in exchange for something typically, right? Uh, a downloadable guide or an ebook or a coupon or something, right? So landing page technology is actually really important to go and take a look at. I use a company called leadpages.net, and I love it. It's relatively expensive. You can build these things. They look like websites, um, and it's cheap. It's you know, 30, 40 bucks a month. This is free, and you can actually put your landing pages right into Facebook, right? So one of the things I can do is I can either create a link uh, or, or a, 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 a hyperlink, or at least put the hyperlink in my, uh, in my banner. I can also go into my uh, custom tabs and make it so that if I get you to my page, rather than encourage you to click like, I, I put a button here that says click here for a special offer for something you'd like, and I take you to a landing page, I get your email, I, I exchange some sort of you know, piece of content, a video, an ebook, a guide, a coupon, what have you, and now you're in my Optum database, and now I can market to you, right? So this is active outbound marketing, right? This is all sorts of stuff that I might do. I might choose to send a newsletter, you know. This is a whole strategy conversation. We're not gonna get into it today, but ultimately, I can't do this without this and this. And not only does this landing page technology serve to function as a way to redirect Facebook traffic rather than to a like and to your fan page and, and kind of trying to hang around in the Facebook world, I can redirect it you know, to my landing page and my opt-in database. I can also, and to me this is the great part, I can create a whole funnel campaign, a whole funnel strategy to drive all of these, right? 
into my landing page. So by way of example, if I'm going to do a pay-per-click ad and I'm going to pay good money to get somebody to click on a link, right, which is what you're doing, I don't want to go through all this hassle only to convert and get you know, less than 20% of these folks that I can actually talk to. Why wouldn't I drive this right to a landing page? Um, you will actually see in this video uh, lots of examples of that, right? That little yellow box that popped up at the beginning. Click on that. That will take you to a landing page, right? That that, that you're looking at is a landing page. You give me your email. You're in my system. Uh, there's also a link in the comments down below um, if you want to check it out. But the idea is you got to think you know long term, right? And and whatever your business is doing, it is critically important that you immediately go out and, and at least set up this infrastructure. It's really easy. It shouldn't take you more than a couple minutes, and set up this infrastructure uh, to capture email addresses and, and route folks from all the sources you're using that you're spending money on or, or that you're not spending money on and at least start to capture their information so that, I don't know, three months from now, a year from now, two years from now, you know, when you decide to do some outbound marketing, you don't say, oh, I don't have a list. The email list, right? If you remember one thing from this entire presentation, build a list, right? Every marketer will tell you unequivocally the most important valuable asset in your company is your opt-in list, your audience so to speak. The, the audience of people, I'm going to write that on here as well, your list is your audience that you can reach out to anytime, day or night, as long as you're not annoying them and then they'll opt out, and have a conversation with. So hope this has been helpful. And feel free to leave lots of comments or questions uh, down below. And thanks so much for watching.